if you ever wondered whether it is possible to implement some graph theory algorithms using Unreal Engine Blueprints and how difficult it is, this video can answer those questions. It is based on my previous video on random level generation. We implemented a naive approach there. It was simple, but sometimes yielded levels with uh, unreachable areas. Now we are going to implement a more sophisticated algorithm based on breadth per search in order to ensure all areas of the level are reachable. I added a new function with the naive BFS implementation. Let's use it and see what it can do. Well, it looks even worse than before, right? But uh, it's important to understand how it works first and then uh, enhance it. So we start in the bottom left corner and put a random suitable uh, level section there. In this case, this is a turn section. And then algorithm goes up and right and places some suitable sections here and there. So in this case, this is a dead end. And here the algorithm randomly placed a T-junction. And then it is repeated. But as uh, the algorithm is random, it can close up before filling the whole level. For example, here we have a turn, and then algorithm randomly placed a dead end here. Here we had a T-junction, and algorithm placed a dead end. And so on. And we cannot simply solve it by telling the algorithm not to place dead ends here and there. Because an algorithm can generate something like... Uh, this. And here there will be no other choice than a dead end. But it would be possible, let's say, to continue the level from this uh, cell. Like, uh, replace this section with a T-junction, for example. And then continue level generation from here. Let's see how this naive BFS implementation works. First, we clear the grid as before and resize it to fit every cell we have. Another important uh, data structure here is uh, this uh, boolean array to track visited cells, because we do not need to visit uh, the same cell twice. And then this array is going to be used to implement BFS on a queue. What we are going to do, we are going to place uh, cells indexes to this array and then pull it uh, from there one by one, and process. We will run uh, the algorithm until this buffer is empty. Yeah, let's uh, forget about these cells on the ring for now. So when the buffer is not empty, we get uh, the first element of this array and remove it. We continue with it only if it hasn't been visited before and mark it as visited right away. Yeah, this one let's uh, skip for now. And then, as before, we randomly get a tunnel section based on the open sides of the current cell. And we set it in the grid. Then, in order to continue our algorithm, we get all adjacent cells based on the open sides. And add every such cell to the buffer array. Now, let's talk how we can uh, improve it. We want to keep track of cells on the rim. In order to be able to continue our level in case of uh, it closed up prematurely before uh, filling the whole level. So every time we add a new tonal section to the grid, we need to check if this tonal section is on the rim or any adjacent tonal section is on the rim. Or maybe it was on the rim, but now it's not. Because when you add something to the grid, it affects four cells adjacent to it. So we get all the adjacent cells on all sides, also add our current cell. And then uh, for every cell, we check if it's on the rim. And if it is, we add it to the set. If it's not, then we remove it, because maybe it was before, but now the grid uh, has changed and, and it's no longer on the rim. 
how we can check that the cell is on the rim? Uh, the condition is simple. First of all, we check that the cell is not empty. If it is, then we can simply return false because it's not a filled uh, cell. Then we check all the cells adjacent to the given cell. And one of the adjacent cells is empty, then it means that the uh, given cell is on the rim. And here we have a condition to use the cells on the rim set. So we continue our algorithm not only until the buffer is empty, but also until the cells on the rim set is empty. So if the buffer is empty, but the cells on the rim is not, we use a cell on the rim to continue our level. We convert it to array in order to get some random element from it. And then use it as a current cell. The only difference from the algorithm we already overviewed is that when we are replacing a cell on the rim with some other random tonal section, we want to ensure that uh, it is going to have uh, more open sides. When you use random, you can replace a turn section with turn section, and uh, it won't uh, open up the level for further generation. So let's say we want to replace a turn with a T-junction or a cross. And here I'm simply changing all available sites to open. By available, I mean that, of course, I'm not going to make a site uh, adjacent to a level border open, right? OK, now let's see how it works. Well, if uh, well, if uh, we look visually, uh, it already looks like that every area of this level can be reached, and it's quite versatile. You have different uh, paths to reach the same uh, destination, like you can go like that, but also you have kind of closed areas like this. that can uh, contain special events, for example, or like a dead ends like that. Uh, I can easily see that you can place a chest with some treasures here and so on. And for example, here you see we have uh, an open area. Maybe it's good for a boss fight. Let me know in the comments if you find this level generation algorithm useful. And also, what other level generation algorithms you use in your games? If you watched until this moment, you must be a real Unreal Engine and game dev enthusiast. For more content like this, you know what to do. That would make me really happy. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next videos. Bye bye.